Hello, friends, and welcome to the PrepWell podcast. I'm your host, Phil Black. And if you have an 8th, ninth, or 10th grader with big aspirations like the Ivy League or military service academies like West Point, ROTC, or athletic scholarships, boom, you've come to the right place. My specialty, my superpower, if you will, is preparing families for these competitive programs. I'll teach you what your child should do, when they should do it, and how you can help. So stick around and prepare to out-prepare. Okay, everyone, let's get right into this topic. Because my guess is that, like me, you have very limited time. I've got four kids. Three of them are in the middle of this college admissions process, so I don't have a lot of time to fool around either. This episode is very important because it lays out the foundation of what this podcast stands for and what you stand to learn. So let's get going. Today, I want to share with you what I consider the most important insight, some consider it controversial, that I've gleaned over the last six years of helping students get into highly selective colleges. The insight I'm about to share is the reason I started this podcast and the basis of my entire online education platform called Prepwell Academy. If I had only one thing to tell parents with high aspiration kids, it would be this one thing. This one thing, this insight is based on a contention that if you want your child to be competitive at the most selective college programs in the country, they cannot wait until junior year to start preparing their body of work. They just can't. And by competitive programs, I mean Ivy League schools, near Ivy League schools, like MIT and Stanford and Duke and Vanderbilt, military service academies, like West Point and the Naval Academy and the Air Force Academy, ROTC scholarships and athletic scholarships. These are the toughest places on earth to get into, with good reason. And if your son or daughter doesn't pay attention to this process until they're in 11th grade, as many will suggest, they will have no shot. And as you'll find out, helping students position themselves so they have a fighting chance to get into these programs has become my specialty. Now, if you're curious about how I became an expert in getting into some of the world's most competitive programs myself, please go back and listen to the first episode of this podcast. It's called The Trailer Episode where I walk you through my personal experiences getting into Yale and Harvard and Goldman Sachs and the Navy SEALs and Shark Tank. So to kick this off, let me pose these questions. How many of you out and about town have heard things like, "Eh, don't worry about that college admission stuff until junior year, or don't start thinking about college until after your son or daughter takes the SAT in the spring of junior year? Or nothing really matters until 11th grade. That's when things really heat up. You will hear this type of talk from parents, from teachers, maybe even some students. But you'll also hear this from some guidance counselors. Wait, what? Guidance counselors? Yes, guidance counselors often give this advice to students and families. This is advice that worked 20 years ago, but does not work today, especially for students who aspire to attend highly selective programs. Now, I'll save some of the details about why this is the case for a future episode. Suffice it to say that it's bad advice. Plain and simple, it is bad advice today. And I'd first like to share why it seems like this advice still lingers, much to my chagrin. Why is it persisting? Why is it taking so long for people to get the memo? Well, here are a few reasons. Reason number one, guidance counselors are trying to survive. This bad advice is often set forth by guidance counselors. Yes, the very people who should know better. They continue to put out this advice. Now, why would they be doing this, you might wonder? Well, in most cases, they are barely hanging on right now with their current workload. They are barely keeping their head above water. There is no way they would be able to handle the additional work that it would take to prepare ninth and 10th graders for highly selective colleges. Not a chance. Now, it doesn't mean they're bad people. They're simply in self-preservation mode. If they wanted to do something like this right, they would need money, they would need resources, they would need, depending on the school, three, four, five more guidance counselors. They need a custom curriculum and a completely different mindset. Most don't have the expertise or the bandwidth to pull this off. By the way, they also, on average, have a caseload of roughly 
450 students per counselor. And let's also remember, a typical guidance counselor doesn't often have a lot of formal training in college admissions. Now, obviously, they pick things up along the way, but their day-to-day -day duties revolve around administration of classes and mentoring and logistics and discipline and graduation rates and writing letters of recommendation and schedule changes. They have a lot on their plate. They can only handle so much. So I don't really blame them for deflecting people who want to get an early jump. They're doing the best they can. Let's go to reason number two. Not every student needs to prepare early. I don't want to overstate my case and make it seem like it's bad advice for every student. It's not. In fact, I would say that your average high school student doesn't have to necessarily start in ninth or 10th grade because they don't necessarily aspire to attend highly selective schools. That's what makes them average. So in some sense, the guidance counselor is correct, depending on who they're talking to. In general, the average student will do just fine, okay, starting the process in 11th grade. The catch is, I don't typically work with average students. I work with students and families who are motivated, who want to stretch themselves, who want to compete. As you know by now, my audience, if you will, or the people who really get it, are the ones who have their sights set on the programs I mentioned earlier, Ivy League schools, near Ivy League schools, military service academies, ROTC programs, students looking for athletic scholarships. These are the toughest paths to navigate. And these are the journeys that I like to take with families. They're very challenging. They require a unique set of tactics and strategies to be successful. And understanding this process and engaging in it is very helpful for students, not only as part of helping them get into college, but once they leave for college and have to fend for themselves. Reason number three, the old system of how college admissions worked has been in place for decades with very few changes. And it's very difficult to change conventions and change the culture that has been so embedded in our society. We have entered, hereby entered, a new world order when it comes to college admissions. This new world order was brought to everyone's attention recently when news broke of, you probably heard of it, Operation Varsity Blues. You've seen the ridiculous acceptance rates, some dipping below 4%. You're aware of the skyrocketing number of applications. We are in a completely new world. And some people and counselors and schools have been slow to admit that this is happening or to really do anything about it. It's like that old tale of boiling the frog. The frog doesn't really realize it when you turn the heat up slowly. They don't realize they're being burned until it's too late. And there's another phenomenon that is slowing progress in this realm. And it's subtle. It's the fact that starting earlier usually means more work for the child and for the parent. Well, who wants more work? A 15 and 16 year old? I don't think so. You, their parent, do you really want to start adding more to-dos to your plate right now? Of course not. It's not surprising when your average student and parent hears, wait until 11th grade, that's music to their ears. They prefer to postpone, to delay, to push back. Anything to prevent more work for me, for us right now. It's a very easy trap to fall into. And the most motivated and engaged and self-aware among us will overcome this inertia, will overcome this procrastination to take action. Now, admittedly, some of my business school friends have questioned why I started a podcast and run a business geared towards such a narrow target market, despite the fact that most all of them are part of this market. My target market is teenagers and parents who have the uncommon willingness to say, yep, we're open to doing the work that it'll take to be competitive in the college admissions process. This is too important a process to take lightly. The financial stakes are too high. And of course, my son or daughter stands to learn a lot along the way, regardless of the outcome. I need to make this a priority. So how many families out there are thinking along these lines? I don't know. Hopefully we'll find out. A growing number, I'm sure. And I can almost guarantee, if I have anything to do with it, that within 10 years, People will look back on these years and think, think to themselves, you waited until when? You didn't start thinking about college until 11th or 12th grade? Were you crazy? Because by then, it'll be standard operating procedures to begin this path in middle school 10 years from now. That's a guarantee. I simply don't focus on the mass market. About 2 million high schoolers apply to college every year, 
And right now I put out content and advice to a small percentage of them. Doesn't mean that one cohort is better than another. It just means that my advice typically has more value for one group over another. Now, students who ignore ninth and 10th grade and then hit the panic button at the end of 11th grade and desperately start searching for college counselors to help them gussy up their applications, that's not my market. And if that means that I'm leaving a lot of potential clients and customers on the table, so be it. I like advising students and families who understand the value of early preparation and getting a head start and not waiting until the last minute and stressing out. But I digress. Okay, so let me make the case for why ninth and 10th grades are actually the most important years of high school. I call them the golden years. In fact, I wrote a blog about this very topic. If you're interested, go to prepwellacademy.com and hit the blog link in the upper right corner and check out the blog. So here's my rationale. First, let's start with an assumption. I will always assume that every student should be ready to apply in what we call the early round of the application process. For those parents who are going through this process for the first time, all you newbies, at the recording of this podcast, an early application is normally due on November 1st of senior year, basically two months into the school year of the senior year. And just because you're ready to apply in the early round doesn't mean that you have to or should apply, but I want my students to be ready to apply, especially students who want to mix it up in the highly selective schools. Now, we're not going to get bogged down right now into the different types of early applications like early action versus early decision versus restricted early action, enrolling admissions, or the distinct advantages that can be gained by applying in the early round. We will leave those particulars to a future episode. But my point is, every high school student, in my opinion, should have an application ready to submit for real by about October 15th of their senior year. Now, for some of you, I know that may seem far away, but it is not. So think about this. If your son or daughter is ready to submit their application by October 15th of their senior year, how much of that senior year will be captured in that application? Not much. About six weeks? My point here is this. For the purposes of how your body of work is being represented on an early application, senior year is irrelevant. Let me repeat that. Senior year is irrelevant. It means nothing. Now, some people are going to scream and yell and go crazy about, well, senior year grades matter, and that I've heard acceptances are rescinded, and that students have to continue on their on a typical trajectory, blah, 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 blah. Yes, I get it. I know. Your child can't stop going to class senior year. They can't go from getting A's and B's to C's and D's on their transcript. Number one, this doesn't happen that often. And number two, it almost never happens with highly motivated students. It's just not part of their DNA. So the bottom line here is senior year doesn't matter in the big scheme of things. Now, if you buy this premise, as overstated as I may be pitching it, this leaves only three years to build up a body of work worthy of the most selective schools. Yep, that's why students who wait until spring of their junior year to start thinking about college admissions will have a rude awakening. They will soon realize that some applications are due in five months. Wait, what? But I'm just a junior. Yes, but your early application must be done by October. That's five months from now. Talk about taking the wind out of a kid's sails. This really catches students by surprise and can create frustration, stress, and disappointment. And this goes for many parents, too. When I talk to parents of juniors for the first time, this is often what I hear. We didn't realize how important class selection was in ninth and 10th grade. Or we thought colleges were looking for well-rounded students. Or we didn't realize how important the summers after 8th, ninth, and 10th grade were. We didn't realize how competitive it was to get into even a state school. Or we assumed the guidance counselor was covering everything. Or we didn't understand how important grades would be even freshman year. We didn't realize that preparing for an athletic scholarship started in 8th and ninth grade. Or we assumed that Susie would eventually get interested in something. Or we thought Chris had what it took to get into an Ivy League. We had no idea. Or we didn't even know what an ROTC scholarship was. 
And to make matters worse, when parents realize that their child has some catching up to do, it doesn't always end well. And when they try to start a conversation about college admissions with their junior in, co- in high school, they hear the universal go-to refrain, which is, I can't deal with that right now. It's my junior year. I'm too busy. Leave me alone. And then it really gets tough to get the genie back in the bottle. Parents and students are faced with an uphill battle. And this is where all of the stories about anxiety and pressure and deadlines come from. But it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, so how do we avoid this situation? Well, we all know now that we have three years to play with, ninth, 10th, and 11th grades. How much of these three years do the two years, ninth and 10th grade, represent? Yes, this is an actual math question. Yes, you guessed it. Ninth and 10th grade represent two-thirds of the time, or 66%. The majority of a student's application will be comprised of what they did in ninth and 10th grade. That's why I call them the golden years. These are the years that your child makes social choices, friend choices, they develop study habits, they sign up for activities, they join clubs, they play or they don't play sports, they make the decisions that have significant impact on their high school trajectory. So why does everybody ignore these years? Two-thirds or 66% of your child's body of work that will show up on their college application is decided in ninth and 10th grade. And if you just said to yourself, holy shit, in your head, you are not alone. Because here are the things that happen in those two years. Number one, class selection. What kind of path are they on? Are they on a path to take AP and honors classes? Are they thinking about a biomed track or a full IB program? Number two, Class performance, also known as GPA, grade point average. GPA is the number one factor that colleges look at and screen for. The majority of your child's GPA is established in ninth and 10th grade, two thirds of it in fact. Meanwhile, everybody's whining and crying about 11th grade. Number three, extracurricular activities like clubs and organizations and volunteering. What did they join and when? Why did they decide to spend time or attention and resources on this club and not that one? Did they have a plan? Is their participation leading to something or is it arbitrary and half-baked? Or are they taking ninth and 10th grade off completely? Happens all the time. Number four, sports. Don't get me started with sports. If you think your child is good enough to use sports to get into college, then you should know, if you're asking the right questions, whether this is true or not well before junior year. And I will address these issues at length in upcoming episodes. Number five, summer experiences. For the student with a plan, the summers after ninth and 10th grade represent golden opportunities. There is an opportunity to consider how your child should spend their time. And in a future episode, I'll share some examples of how some of my best prep wellers use their summers to do great things. But without a plan, the summers often devolve into a complete waste of time. Not a book is read. Not a math problem is solved. What a complete waste. Students in many cases actually regress, especially academically, versus blossoming based on what they do over the summer. Number six, a relationship with their guidance counselor. Most ninth and 10th graders could care less about their guidance counselor. They barely know who they are. They probably couldn't even pick them out in a lineup, and they have no relationship. Now, they may have met them, for 20 seconds to discuss their class schedule and maybe get a signature. Little do they know that the guidance counselor will be someone who writes them a letter of recommendation for college in a few years. The best prep wellers, of course, know this and cultivate a long-standing friendship with their school counselor. And if I wanted to push this argument even a little bit further, I would add standardized test prep to the things that students can do in ninth and 10th grade. And by that, I mean preparing for the SAT or the ACT. Now, I include this in pre-11th grade activities because I recommend to most of my prep wellers to study for the SAT or the ACT in the summer before junior year. And of course, performing well in school in 9th and 10th grade and taking things seriously will certainly help you to do well on standardized tests. So if we now include SAT prep or ACT prep, 
as an activity that happens prior to 11th grade, that bumps the percentage up to 70%. Now, just to review, what does that 70% figure mean? That 70% represents the amount of your child's body of work, their GPA, their summer experiences, their classes, their clubs, sports, band, whatever else they may be involved in, that will already be spoken for before they step one foot into 11th grade. Let me repeat that. By the time your child steps one foot into 11th grade, 70% of their application is already spoken for. Now, this can be a very empowering or scary insight, depending on where you and your child are on this journey. And mind you, I'm not just guessing about how this works. I'm living through this process in real time. I have, as of the date of this recording, two sons who are twins who just started their junior year. Now, I also have a ninth grader and a fifth grader, but the twins, the juniors, have less busy schedules now as juniors than they did in ninth and 10th grade. That's the opposite of everybody else who took the traditional advice to wait and do everything in junior year. Why? Because they spent ninth and 10th grade getting involved in school clubs and activities, and they play three sports, and they're Boy Scouts, and they did significant things over the past few summers, including international travel, and getting jobs, and working, and finishing Eagle Scout projects, and taking on leadership roles, and community service, and studying for standardized tests, and taking summer school classes. This has given them a lot of momentum, and it allows them to focus on what really matters in 11th grade, like grades, and standardized test scores, and college visits, and their physical and mental well-being. When everything gets pushed to 11th grade, and students are panicking and scrambling for jobs and internships and leadership roles, and community service opportunities, on top of their classwork, on top of studying for standardized tests, and trying to sneak in college visits, it becomes extremely difficult to manage even for the most capable students and families. So why put anyone through this struggle? So in summary, if your child does what most students do and waits until 11th grade, and Lord help us, 12th grade, they will be leaving 70% of the contents of their application up to chance. And for students who aspire to the most selective colleges, that is not an option. That is a recipe for disappointment and broken dreams or worse. If you have a child who is moving in the direction of Ivy League or near Ivy League schools, like the Dukes, the Stanfords, the MITs of the world, or a service academy like West Point or the Naval Academy, or they're seeking an ROTC or an athletic scholarship, please engage in this process now. And by now, I mean ninth or 10th grade, obviously, because if you're still listening to this podcast, you likely have a child, a high aspiration child in ninth or 10th grade, or maybe a little bit younger. The good news is that given how few people right now understand how this new reality works, your child can use this information and use this knowledge to their strategic advantage when it comes to college admissions. And if they really want to get ahead, you should encourage them to listen to this episode and then enroll them in my online program, Preppel Academy which teaches ninth and 10th graders how this whole process works in a series of short videos delivered to their phone every week. Okay, friends, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to the podcast, share it with a friend who might find it valuable, and if you have some time, give us a review. Until next week, goodbye, good luck, and never stop preparing. This podcast is brought to you by PrepWell Academy. PrepWell Academy is my one-of-a-kind online mentoring program that delivers to your ninth or 10th grader a short, highly relevant video from me every week, every Sunday, in fact, where I give them a heads up about what they should be thinking about to stay ahead of the game. To get these valuable lessons into your child's hands, please head over to PrepWellAcademy.com and enroll your child today.